It says the same rotate your phone thing. Okay, maybe just rotate it now. Yeah. But that's what it said to me before we started, and then we were sideways. Okay. Whoop, all right. So we've got you and Bruno. We don't have anyone watching yet, so that's okay. Let me up this a little bit. For the phone before we went live live? No, it said. Okay, we might want to restart it because we might still be sideways. Let me check on mine. Okay. Because. Right. Hi, folks. If you guys are watching, um, the video might be sideways. We're checking in to make sure that that is not the case as it was last week. For some reason, our phone that we do lives on has been being extra okay, finicky about thing. image rotation. If we're fine, we'll keep going, and if we're not, we're going to end this and start a new one so you don't have to watch the video like this. We're right side up. We're right side up! Okay, cool. So, we are going to keep going then. Now, we are not in our distance learning studio. We are in, um, or outside of the grizzly bear enclosure, and today we're going to be talking about seasonal changes in bears and badgers. Now, I am Educator Emily, for those of you who haven't watched our Facebook Lives before, and before we start, I do have a couple of announcements. As I'm sure many of you guys are aware, Winston the Sloth is going to make his public debut extremely soon. On October 14th, he will be out for public display. On that morning, we will be having a special Facebook Live for those of you who aren't able to come to the zoo that day and see Winston, so make sure to tune in for that. Next Saturday, we are not going to be doing a Facebook Live at 11. We are going to be doing a pre-recorded video that will be posted at that time. This pre-recorded video will feature Winston the Sloth as well as his other relative here at Zoo Montana, Bandy the Three-Banded Armadillo. We're not doing a Facebook Live inside of his enclosure in efforts to minimize uh, stress for him as he will have moved into a brand new home and will be meeting a lot of adoring fans and that weekend, so it's probably best if we are outside and not in his exhibit that day. But today we're going to talk about seasonal changes in animals. So as the leaves change, and as the weather gets colder, many animals throughout North America prepare for winter. This includes a variety of strategies. Some animals migrate, like geese flying south for the winter, or they migrate elevationally, like elk or pronghorn. Some animals hibernate or go into torpor, which we'll talk about a little bit today, and some animals stock up for food for the winter. If you guys haven't uh, looked at Fat Bear Week on the National Park's Instagram page, I highly recommend you do so. It wrapped up on Monday with bear number 747, the jumbo jet winning uh, Fat Bear Week, and it's just wholesome, chunky bear content. But those bears are in a state of hyperphagia, which is where they're basically trying to eat all the nutrients possible before they enter their torpor state for winter. Now, none of the animals that we have here at our zoo, whether that's our grizzly bears behind me or Yuki, our North American badger, go into hyperphagia or torpor or slash hibernation truly because they have food, shelter, and all the resources that they would need year round. So they don't have to worry about stocking up for lean times. However, animals in the wild, these behaviors and adaptations are extremely crucial because winters are barren and hard to find resources and they can be extremely harsh. So being able to have adaptations that allows you to survive during harsh months is a key adaptation to ensure your survival in the spring. Now, there is a difference between torpor and hibernation. Today, the animals that we talk about, the North American badger and the grizzly bear, go into a state of torpor. So it's a common misconception that bears hibernate, but they don't truly hibernate. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, their definition of hibernation is a state of greatly reduced metabolic activity and lowered body temperature, adopted by certain animals as an adaptation to adverse weather conditions. Now, true hibernators include animals like woodchucks, ground squirrels, or even some species of bats. Now, in these animals that truly hibernate, the changes that happen to their body are extreme. For example, I have it written down here because it's wild. In woodchucks, their normal heart rate is about 80 beats per minute. However, in the state of hibernation, their heart rate falls to either four or five beats per minute. In certain species of ground squirrels, their body temperature drops from about 38 degrees Celsius to negative 2.9 degrees Celsius during their states of hibernation. 
Hibernation is also an involuntary process. Animals don't have control about when they go in or come out of hibernation, and hibernation is a state that's very difficult to come out of. Turpor, on the other hand, which is what grizzly bears and badgers do, is a voluntary state with less extreme physiological changes that is easier to go in and out of. So the definition that we are using for torpor today is a deep sleep that slows an animal's metabolism. Now their body temperature and heart rate will also decrease in the state of torpor, but it's nothing nearly as extreme as going from 80 beats per minute to four beats per minute. So animals in torpor also wake up easily. This is why bears can give birth in their dens, right? You can't give birth while you are unconscious if you are a bear. However, female grizzly bears are able to wake up out of their state of torpor to give birth to their young, and this is a key adaptation, which is why they don't hibernate. Now, like I said, Bruno and Ozzy here don't have to go into their state of torpor. You can actually see, we think it's Bruno, uh, sacked out in his um, little, there we go, his little hay pile right there behind me. He's lounging in the nice warm sun. But in wild bears that do go into torpor, a couple things happen to their bodies. First, their body temperature is going to drop slightly, right? And everything that they're doing is conserving energy. So the colder your body is, the less calories you have to use to keep it warm. Their breathing rate will also drop sometimes as much as 50%, right? The slower that you breathe, the less calories you have to move or use to move your muscles, expand your lungs, use your airways, all this stuff. Their heart rate will also drop as well, but again, it's not anything like going from 80 beats per minute to four beats per minute. It drops only by a couple beats here and there. Let me just make sure I'm getting everything correct. Now, the cool thing about torpor or hibernation is obviously these bears are in dens or underground, secluded in some way from the harsh winter conditions for months at a time. And aren't they gonna have to like pee or poop? Like what, what are they gonna do? The cool thing with bears at least is they don't pee or poop for months because they're not actually eating anything. When they're in this torpor state, they're living off of fat reserves. So nothing's actually going through their digestive tract, right? Nothing's entering their mouth, going down in their stomach, through their intestines and out their butt. Everything is being used from their fat stores. However, their bodies are still producing urea, which is the main component in urine. Now, to ensure that they're not losing crucial water, the bears don't pee. Instead, they reabsorb that urea into their body break it down into amino acids that then create new proteins that the bears can use for energy. So this state of torpor is an incredibly energy efficient process that ensures their survival through to the winter months. Now, studies done in bears, ground squirrels, and even dwarf lemurs, yes, there are some species of tropical animals that do go into torpor or hibernation, have found that there's a set of genes that animals are able to turn on and off depending on when they go into the state of torpor or hibernation, and these genes control how your body metabolizes fat. So obviously you're going to want to be able to metabolize your fat better when you're in torpor or hibernation, as opposed to when you're out and about expending calories. Now the cool thing is, is all those animals are mammals, we are mammals as well, and humans have those exact same genes in our genome. So all those sci-fi movies where scientists and astronauts are out in space and then they want to go far, far away, so they like go into a freeze chamber and they're like, 100 years in the future, I'll wake up. Maybe in the far distant future, if scientists can figure out how these genes work, those crazy sci-fi movies will become a reality, but not in our lifetimes. Definitely not in our lifetimes, but it's super cool to think about, right? Now for the badger, sweet little Yuki, um, if you have been to our zoo recently, you've seen that she's gotten a lot bigger, so she has put on more weight uh, for her winter weight. However, she is not going to hibernate or go into torpor, much like our grizzly bears. Or she's just going to kind of slow down her activity. Now, badger torpor is very different than grizzly bear torpor. Badger torpor is like in shorter cycles than bears. Um, so the cycle of torpor for a badger extends to about 29 hours. So if you imagine it like a graph, their body temperature is going to plummet, their heart rate's going to plummet, their breathing rate's going to plummet for about 29 hours, and then it's going to peak again, and they're gonna come back up to their normal resting rate, 
go back down, come back up to the resting rate, and go back down. This allows them to come out of their burrows if they need to. So sometimes badgers will mate in the winter, they'll forage in the winter, and they'll actually change the bedding in their burrows fairly frequently. So these 29 hour cycles allow them to still come out and function and do normal things when the weather conditions are more um, tolerable or amicable for the badgers. So while the bears and the badgers do it very differently, these are key adaptations that help them to survive harsh winters all throughout North America. Now, do we have any questions, Ms. Keedy? Not that I can see, but let me double check. That was a lot of information really fast about a lot of things that I also had to teach myself this morning, because I'm not gonna lie, I honestly thought bears hibernated up until this morning, and they don't. <laughs> I don't see any questions. Okay, cool. I, I can do I can do a zoom in on Bruno. Okay, I will step out of the frame really quickly so that you guys can look at Bruno. He's uh, having a nice snooze in the sunshine, which sounds amazing if you but I'll get out of your way because you wanna see him. You don't wanna see me. I don't think we have any questions today. All right, folks. Well, if there are no questions, I will thank you guys for tuning into our Facebook Live today. And it's a beautiful day out. So I'll have to come to the zoo, hang out, say hi to our grizzly bears and to our badger. But if there's no questions, uh, again, I'm Educator Emily, and we will see you guys for our not Facebook Live next Saturday. But why Bye, guys. Why is there no crashes in it? For the bear. Do you have any questions about the bear? Do you have questions about the bear? Do you have a question about the bear?